I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, I'm going to challenge you to, if you're really serious about looking into Nicaragua, whether that's for retirement as a really serious, like long-term travel destination, maybe as a digital nomad, perhaps you're looking for a giant life change and you want to have a place to go. I'm going to challenge you and I'm going to talk about why you need, for most of you, I mean, there'll be an exception, to just get on a plane in the next few weeks and come down and explore Nicaragua. But I'll get into it right after the bump. I have a lot of conversations online about, well, life in Nicaragua or processes to move to Nicaragua, a lot of uh, really deep details in many cases about nuances of things that happen in Nicaragua, how they work, what processes, or who do you talk to, where do you find the right house, how do you go about, like a lot of things, and it, and it covers the gamut, right? And recently I had a lot of conversations where we were digging into a, a lot of really minute details uh, about very specific circumstances, and it, and it really hit me how much when we do this in general. Now, of course, I'm subjected to a giant amount of this, and I say subjected in a very loving way. I love doing this show, and I love answering questions for you guys, and I'm, I'm here as a resource, and, and, and don't hesitate to get down there in those comments and ask your questions, leave your comments, especially nice ones. Um, and, and if you want to make a video that you can send in, and I'd love to have you on the show asking questions in that format. All the information is down below, of course. Um, but... Uh, like, like I, I'm not, I'm not complaining that this happens. It's more of analyzing what does happen to understand what's going on in the in the mindsets of people who are watching the show or engaging on the show at least, and what they're looking to do. Now, of course, it, you guys are all over the map, right? Physically, you're all over the map, of course, but you're also all over the map as far as ages and intents and like goals and when you want to come down and all kinds of things. And my channel has a tendency to gravitate towards relocation. That's not intentional per se, but it, it is the nature of I am an American who relocated to Nicaragua. I have lived in many different countries, eight in total, Nicaragua being, well, only one of those, but I, I lived here, left, and then came back as a permanent choice after having sampled a lot of different countries, choosing Nicaragua. After a lot of research, I really did put in effort. I am not uh, one of those people who just heard about Nicaragua, tried it out, seemed like it was good and stayed. I tried it out, I loved it, but I wanted to know what else was out there and put in a lot of work and have some great stories of amazing places that I've lived. It's not that Nicaragua is the only amazing option, anything but the truth, but it is an amazing option and it is the right option for me and my family but we, we did a lot of careful analysis on that. So from, from certain regards, I totally understand why you want to do loads and loads of research and really dig in and make sure you're making good decisions and making good choices and all that. And there is certain things that are uh, important to do, certain due diligence that you want to do ahead of time and make sure that Nicaragua is going to meet your needs, right? And, and the first thing is determining what those needs are, which I don't know now because this is a one-way video and I, I can't hear you talking. Okay, sir, don't scream at the TV. That, that I can't hear. No, no. Okay, never mind. Anyway, so I just don't know, right? But when I get into direct one-on-one -on -one conversations with with people, you know, I can dig into that. But in general, I don't know. So uh, there's there's this huge range of why people may be coming to Nicaragua, and sometimes the questions that you're asking um, are valuable in solving those problems. But I'm going to challenge you on two important points. One is that until you come to Nicaragua. Knowing what questions you really need to ask can be very difficult. Now, there's some things that are easier than others, and some of them have nothing to do with Nicaragua per se. For example, if you're a Canadian and you're going to be moving to Nicaragua and you expect to move to Nicaragua full time, you may have some serious questions for Canada or your lawyer in Canada or whatever to understand how that's going to play out with your residency, your citizenship, or your taxes, your health care, whatever in Canada. It's not really about Nicaragua. It's more about moving abroad, but that's one aspect. Whatever country you're coming from, whatever passport you carry, they may have or it may have specific 
uh, requirements for you, may have certain uh, duties, taxes, different things they may need to consider. And every country is different. If you're coming from the United States, like me, we have very specific uh, tax liabilities that we have to be prepared for, very specific uh, legal things that we have to watch out for. We have specific limitations on us, even when abroad, on investing and how we spend our money and how we move money around. A lot of countries have that. That's not unique in any way. But those are all things we have to be aware of. So those are important questions to be asking. And if you're an American, especially, you can ask here. I'm not a lawyer, but I can give you some insight as to what people are concerned about, what we do, and what we've learned, and, and so forth. Um, but if you're coming from anywhere but the United States, I do my best to keep my ear to the ground, but I don't have really good resources in a lot of cases. But so that's one piece. And yes, that is diligence that you should be doing mostly while you're still in your home country, because there's never going to be a time where it's easier to do it. But once you come to Nicaragua, you're going to find that the questions you have about Nicaragua, the things you're unsure about, the things that you just don't know, what you don't know, are going to prove to be pretty challenging to have known from abroad. Now, what do I mean? I mean that you may ask questions like, well, how much does it cost to have a house? And you mention a very specific place. But then you come to Nicaragua and you realize that that specific place may not be the right place for you or your family. Uh, maybe it's very expensive and you actually found that there are other places that were cheaper, you had no idea. This is a common one, actually. People often look at the most expensive places from abroad and say, wow, I could afford that in this beautiful paradise location. I'm going to move there. But then when they get here, they realize that that location may not be ideal for them, even within Nicaragua. And then, and not that it's not as good as they hoped, but there may be other places that are even better. They had no idea existed. Well, that's a really important revelation that you can't really have from abroad. Of course, if you ask, could there be a better place? You'd say, oh yeah, I'm sure there could be. But just discovering it, so many people, just naturally, it's completely predictable and uh, and expected and normal. And we're not, 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 you know, saying this is a terrible thing, but it's really common to look from abroad, see vacation spots, see advertised spots uh, and say, oh, this city, this beach, those are the places for me well, because everyone else is doing it, that must be a good reason for me. And for some of you, it is. But for the majority of you, it is not. The fact that it's more expensive, often a little bit more dangerous, a little bit less accessible, more competition, sometimes just lots of expats. Maybe those things are things that you would say, well, I, I do want to get away from those. I, I None of those are positives for me, or maybe just some of them. Uh, but well, where would I go? How do I? But if you come here, you may very quickly say, oh, oh, I have this beautiful whole country to explore and it's all safe and it's all affordable and it's all an option. Oh, I need to, right? Or maybe, maybe you have this question of, oh, how am I going to get a variety of food delivered. And if, now sure, if you watch my channel, you probably know to ask this, but most people, when you're looking at Nicaragua, it would not occur to you, at least not initially, that variety of food could be something to be really concerned about. But now that I say it, you're running through your mind and you're thinking, how would I? So if I'm gonna live in Leon with Scott, hopefully not with me, I, I know that some people are looking for a room, but if you're looking at coming down, you're looking to live in this city and you're like, well, okay, it's a big city, right? Yep, 300,000 people. Well, there's got to be a variety of restaurants. I must be able to just go out to eat, get lots of food every given night. Well, yes, there's a restaurant open every day. There's always an availability of food. It's always high quality, always nice places, always good beer and and uh, almost always live music. You're pretty safe that you will not have a night where you're not going to even have an option for live music. So all this is fantastic. But there's one little piece in all that that is not so great, and that is the variety of food. Are there a number of restaurants? Yes, there's certainly enough restaurants that you won't be tired of the seats or tables or views or layout or menu per se, but every restaurant nearly has the same food within a very small band. There's a few exceptions. Sua, for example, has a Mediterranean uh, uh, menu that is Peruvian inspired, so a little bit different. It's not the broadest menu, and they're kind of an isolated restaurant. So while we like to eat at Sua quite often, it's a little bit on the pricey side, so that discourages us some. It doesn't have delivery that we can find, so that discourages us a bit. We'd have to go to it, or, you know, Paul's out driving around, I have him bring it home kind of thing. But that's kind of what we're limited to. So that's not great to, yes, it's good, its food is good, but just one place, well, where's next? Well, 
Barbaro has basically the stock menu, but it does have a few extra items, like it does have a salmon filet in a mustard sauce. Well, no one else has a salmon filet in a mustard sauce, so that's fantastic. We have an extra option there, but it's literally one menu item that I can think of. And yes, if you hunt around the city and really put in some effort, you'll start to assemble a list of restaurants that gives you a little bit of variety. But what you're going to find is that on an average night, it's a bit limited. The variety isn't that big. You're going to struggle to find some things, like if if I want to get Japanese here in town, that's difficult. If I want to get American Chinese, regular Chinese I can get, but American Chinese, the thing that Americans think of as Chinese, no, I can't really get that here in Leon. Kind of a little bit, not really. Uh, Mexican, yes, I can get it, but it's extremely limited and I can't get anything that would be like a Taco Bell, which is not Mexican, that's Tex-Mex. So if I want Tex-Mex here in town, I'm completely out of luck. That's in town. There is a new Tex-Mex place, uh, California style that Mike Lopez owns out on the beach. So if you're heading out there, uh, it is the new Tiki Bar slash Tex-Mex place really close to Oasis. Uh, so head down there and definitely get um, some tacos or burritos or enchiladas or whatever. Yes, it does exist, but it's not in the city. He's not going to deliver on Pedito's Jaw or anything like that. So yeah, these play and he's brand new. That's why I'm mentioning it. The um, It's not even done with construction, but the, the restaurant is open and we ate there the other night. In fact, I'm probably showing scenes of it right now, now that I realize I'm talking about it and we were just there and I did record a little bit. Okay. So when you put this all together though, what you're going to find is, yeah, pizza, no problem. We have a variety of and quality not just quantity of pizza here in town. Not a problem. Is it is it upstate New York? No, of course not. But is it pretty good pizza? Yeah, it's better than I was getting in Texas. Not a problem. Okay, can I get traditional Nicaraguan food? Yes, so much at such high quality, no problem. Now, if you're a meat eater, can I get steaks, hamburgers, hot dogs, quesadillas, like meat, really good, like solid, op yeah. Zero problem. Amazing. All of those items. What if I want traditional Nicaraguan style fish? That's whole fried fish, stuff like that. Yeah, easy. Any kind of chicken, any kind of barbecue, that stuff, you're golden. And so a lot of you are saying, wow, sounds really good. And it is a lot of really good. But if you live here full time, you are going to start to find that not having a Thai restaurant, not having a Japanese restaurant, there is sushi, but there's no Japanese. There's just a touch of Korean. There is essentially uh, no Tex-Mex. Tex-Mex, excuse me. There's very little Mexican. There is very little limited style of Chinese. There's whole regions of the world that are not represented. There's like no African food, no Moroccan, no Ethiopian, no South African, no nothing like that. There's basically, there's no Vietnamese, there's no Cambodian, there's no Indian, there's no Pakistani, uh, there's no Afghani. Like things that I like to eat in other places, places if you said, oh, there's a new Afghani restaurant opening up down, you know, I'd be like, let's go, fantastic, let's go do that. But no, we don't have those things very often. And even a lot of American traditional food, even uh, getting subs, for example, that's not really something we can get. And I know someone's going to say, Scott, no, I know there's Subway, and I think there's two of them in Leon. Subway's not a sub, okay? Look, it's not bad. We get it from time to time. My kids like it. There's nothing wrong with Subway, but I'm from the United States. That's not what a sub looks or tastes like at all. It's its own food. It's fine, but no, not what I'm looking for. In no way does it satisfy any of my sub cravings. We do have a McDonald's, and now just opened, we have a Carl's Jr. We do not have a Burger King. We used to. We're really hoping that comes back. Um, and that's about it for American chains. Fried chicken? Yeah, you're good to go. But so many things, so many types of varieties, so many restaurants that experiment with things we don't have. That was a really long diatribe on our lack of restaurants. But my point being, until you've lived here longer than a week, you're probably not going to go, I'm getting really tired of the food options I have. Is there really nothing more to explore and start to realize Oh no, I've tried all these different restaurants. And especially if you're looking for delivery, the number of, that are available is not, of course, only like five to 10% of the restaurants in town have Petito's Jaw delivery. So really quickly, you're looking at three pizza places instead of 30. You're looking at one or two burger places instead of 10 or 20. Uh, you just, you're just losing all these options. And so you're like, okay, okay. So my delivery is exhausted. I get really tired of that food really quickly. I'm going to, I'm going to go out and explore and start going to restaurants and that will buy you some more time. But really quickly, you're going to find that the overall variety is quite low. There's great little restaurants in every little neighborhood. They're sprinkled all throughout the city. And this is one of the reasons that the variety is low is because there's so many locations. So like those little barbecue places that are so good, the Asada on the street, 
every couple blocks there's one and a pretty good one in most cases. So those little pop-up restaurants or nearly sidewalk restaurants are everywhere. And the Fritangas, which do the super traditional fried foods that are made in the kitchen and then sold off of a table, that those sit out a little bit longer. It's super traditional, very, very cheap. That's where you're eating for like a dollar. The Asada places, you're looking at three, four dollars to get a meal. Uh, and some obviously get a bit more expensive. The Fritanga places, you're much more looking at one to maybe three dollars for a meal. Even now, even with all the inflation, that's still really cheap. They're going to come up some, but they're still pretty cheap. And it's often like eggs and cheese and fried tacos and things made with coleslaw, things made with potatoes, that kind of stuff. It's like it's like balls of mashed potatoes, all kinds of things. It's pretty good, but you're not going to do it all the time. Very Nicaraguan flavors. You may end up liking it. And of course, beans and rice at all these places, all these things. It's amazing that you can get it in every little neighborhood. And when we lived in, in La Borrio, we had a little hot dog place right around the corner. And not too far, there'd be a little hamburger place. And sometimes there'd be a popcorn place. And you know, there's all, and, and a Fritanga, of course, right across the street. But, oh, I wanna go out and do something completely different? Totally out of luck. Here, I can't even walk to a restaurant anywhere because I'm, I'm too far out in the barrio. I've gotta have things delivered or, or gotta drive into the city. So, uh, so much variety is just not gonna be there, but you wouldn't know until you come here and you're challenged by that and you say, oh, it's not a question I would ever have known to ask. I didn't even, like, why didn't I know? But you, why would you? It's not the kind of thing that you're used to having to think about. But when you come to a new country, the things that you have to ask about are not necessarily things you can predict. And that is very important for just coming down. The second point that I wanted to make, can you believe I was actually on two points and that was only the first one? So the second point that I wanted to make is that by coming down and spending a little bit of time in the country, there's a million things, and everyone knows this, no one's, no one's claiming this isn't true, nothing of the sort, but you don't really think about just how much comes down to the feeling the smell of the air, the breeze, the driving through the neighborhoods, the smiles on people's faces, the way that it, sometimes it's just a thing that you, you, it's ineffable, right? And you, and you come down and some people just go, this, this isn't hitting me. Like, it's just, I don't know, I'm not jiving. No one says jiving. And, and then others of us come down and just immediately you step off the plane and you go, I'm home. This is it. I don't, I don't know why. I just magic, right? And that's, that's often how it works. You could put in years of research and then fly down, step off the plane, and in hours go, this, this is, what was, what was I thinking, right? And I've seen people do that. I've seen people put in years of discussing, thinking about it, even like planning, come down and make it less than five minutes before they were done, not the place for them. They, they made an effort, they went out and got food, and they did things, but it, they had to turn it into a vacation and not a serious uh, investigation of where they wanted to live. They had no interest whatsoever, totally not for them seen other people, the absolute polar reaction. Step off uh, the plane, get to the hotel, wake up bright and early, step out, feel the air off the ocean, see the palm trees, get their first plate of Gallo Pinto and go, yeah, this is it. I don't need to look any further. I'm done. <laughs> this is, I've made it, right? It goes both ways, but that's not something that your research is going to be able to tell you. Of course, yeah, you want to do some research, of course, to know like, well, what country should I go investigate? And knowing if Nicaragua is the place you should start or if Ireland is, is definitely something you want to know before you fly to one of those very disparate places. But once you've said, boy, boy, I'm watching Scott's videos. This Nicaragua place seems awfully interesting. You start to invest some time. You're starting to do some research. Look, if you're in the United States, almost all of the United States can get here for under $200. A lot of the biggest population areas, if you're on the East Coast, you're in the South, typically you can get here for a lot closer to $100. That's one way, of course. But that's, seriously, think about that in the terms of an American income. Like, are you ta thinking about one or two meals where you're gonna go out to eat and maybe you have kind of a nice dinner, get a beer or two? What if you just skipped that and came to Nicaragua instead? And then, well, because you skipped that and came to Nicaragua instead, if you skipped two more meals, but instead took that money and bought food while in Nicaragua, well, you could probably stay in Nicaragua for several days without spending a penny, just shifting where you're spending it because you don't have to buy American meals. Suddenly those plane tickets are completely nominal and you're coming down and within minutes, you're gonna step off that plane and you're gonna say, okay, there's a bunch of things I wasn't expecting. Oh, there's some things I was totally expecting. This is exactly what my research told me. Oh, but this is, I had no idea about this, right? And you're gonna really quickly 
just boom, 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 have this new picture of Nicaragua. And it's just going to flood you. And you're going to be like, okay, now I have a feeling. Now I know about, about my emotions. Is my initial emotional reaction one that's going to allow this to move forward? You need to figure that out. If that's going to be a no way, you want to know as soon as possible. Every moment that you're researching the wrong place is just a bunch of wasted life spirit, right? But if you're coming down, you come down, you find, okay, okay, I've got this emotional reaction and I'm good. This is hitting me. This has potential. You're not ready to make a, a, a decision. You're just feeling good about it now. Take all those questions that you knew you needed to ask, start asking them here. Suddenly, oh, these answers are quick and easy. And sometimes the things you're asking, you go, oh, I don't need to ask. That makes no sense. Now I see why, right? Like, I don't know. Why is there no train running between these places? Oh, because there's a bus and it's $2. And why would they? Oh, I get it. Well, how do you get to the, why isn't there an airport in Leon? Oh, wait, I can get to the airport in Managua in under two hours, even in traffic and an hour and a half without traffic. Okay. I would still like one in Leon, but that's, that explains why there isn't one. There's no need for one. I get it. Now they look so much farther apart on the map. They're not right. All kinds of stuff. Just so fast. You build a picture of what matters to you and, and just how things are. And then you're able to ask meaningful questions that actually matter much faster. You'll answer things just automatically. You'll know what not to ask because there's no need. In many cases, sometimes you'll still ask silly questions. It happens, but you will get so many answers, both this on one side, this emotional reaction, this, this just feeling that you have to have to make a choice on moving to the right place. I realize there's a few people who choose because they, they, they feel like they're trapped. And that's unfortunate that anyone ha that anyone has to feel that way. Um, and Nicaragua has a tendency to get those people. If you're coming from the United States or Canada, and you're you're at your absolute uh, tightest potential budget, you say, "Look, I, this is it. I have, let's say, eight hundred dollars a month to work with, and there's no way for me to have more than that. Uh, and and I have to find a way to live." Well, the U.S. and Canada are off limits. They're they're not options. And Mexico is not an option. Panama is not an option. Costa Rica is certainly not an option. What are you going to do with an $800 budget? Well, you only have a few reasonable choices where you could reasonably be able to pull off a lifestyle as an expat. A local can do a little bit cheaper than you can, but as an expat to be able to put food on the table and, and you know, have a place to go. Nicaragua is on your short list, along with places like Haiti and Honduras. Yes, there's some great places in Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala. All of them will be doable on that budget potentially. But in Nicaragua, you have the advantage of it's basically the entire country is available on that budget. There's a few exceptions, but they're very isolated. You have a lot of options, and in most of the country, that budget will allow you to have a little bit of flexibility. Never is $800 a month going to give you a lot of flexibility. That is unfortunately never going to happen. But if you're living on a fixed income from Social Security, and it's very, very tight, and you just have to make it work for whatever reason, Nicaragua could be where you're coming, and whether or not you like it may not end up being a factor that you get to consider. That's very sad, and I'm sorry for the people that that happens to. That is pretty rare, but it does happen. And because it happens, and this is a place that is able to make that kind of budget feasible for you, all of those people pretty much come here. Very few places for them to go. So uh, we do realize that is something that happens here. So um, that's a little bit different. But outside of that circumstance, you're really coming. You're looking for a place that you emotionally bond with, that it just is right for you. And if this isn't it and you get that feeling in Mexico, even if it's twice the cost and easily it's more than that, uh, then that's probably where you should be. But if you come here and get that feeling, yes, ask your questions, do your investigation, start looking at which city. There's nothing is going to answer your questions more than being here. And the thing that prompted all this is the amount that I see people asking really detailed questions and, and I'm happy to answer them and I want to answer them and I want to get as much information out there for you guys as possible. But the amount that you guys dig into really minutia, really, and, and things that often are likely to change by the time that they actually apply to you. And that doesn't mean it's wrong to investigate. I'm not saying that at all. Absolutely, if you want to know, for example, what's the cost of, I don't know, registering a car in Managua this year, because you're moving down in two years. As long as we all understand that this information is from 2024, we don't know what it's going to be in 2026. It's probably going to change by the time you actually move down. But you're trying to work out a really rough budget so you understand like how this weighs against some other places. Like, I get it. That's fine. But often these are the points where people are getting into a lot of details. And then 
by the time they move down, none of those details are that accurate. Everything has changed. Oh, we stopped registering cars. Oh, they doubled the price because they figured out that's where, you know, they were losing money. They're, oh, uh, we don't have cars anymore. We've moved to, to hovercraft because the world invented something new since that time. Like things change here faster than other places uh, because it's just a small country. It's easy to, to change. So those are things you have to be aware that you may be putting in a lot of time investigating something that if you came down, you could potentially investigate in a fraction of the time and effort while answering much more important questions really rapidly and uh, just making it very practical. So that's the thing is, is the, the effort. And I know some people can't travel for whatever reason and you, and you have to make a really good decision before you come down. And, and I caution you to please find a way to travel if at all possible before you do that. I know people who've done it, put in every their entire life savings into moving, came down, stepped off the plane, and really instantly was not happy with where they went. And it had nothing to do with, they, you know, they, they of course, were emotional at that point and, and panicky because they had made such a big commitment without testing anything, without having a realistic view. And, uh, you know, then they're like, everything's more expensive than I thought. Well, no, it turned out it wasn't. They just weren't shopping the way that they were told to and the you know just nothing went the way that they thought it was going to go but they didn't give it any opportunity to learn they had to go from just watching my videos basically and while this is informational there's a ton i can't get across uh for how life is really going to be for you minute to minute throughout your day and uh, it turned out one of the biggest sticking points for them was they weren't a fan of the gym options nearby to where they live. They asked, are there gyms? Yeah, gyms are such a thing here. Gym culture is really big in Nicaragua. But the gyms here aren't that similar to the rest of Latin America or to the United States, or to presumably a lot of other places as well, but those are the only places that I ever go to them. And so they were uh, just... Had they brought an expectation from, say, Costa Rica or Guatemala or Mexico, something like that, and they were like, well, I know gyms there. They must be the same in Nicaragua. So the fact that there were gyms nearby, they assumed all these things, and none of those were true. The prices were different. The equipment was different. The style was different. The look and feel, just everything. And that, that, those little things. This was a person who was really into going to the gym. So when they didn't get the gym experience that they were hoping for, that kind of, I think, triggered a lot of other things because that was a really major part of their lifestyle. It was part of their entertainment, part of their daily routine, and also the coffee shops were a little bit different and they didn't like the way that the seating is in the coffee shops that were available to them easily. And for most of us, those are really minor things. And you say, well, that's a crazy thing to do. That's not. If that's what your lifestyle is, is you sit in a coffee shop and you do this, like, you know, Valentina, who does my thumbnails, she goes and sits in a beautiful Argentinian, because she lives in Argentina, uh, a coffee shop and people watches and has this experience. It's really important to her. And we can't replicate that here in, in Leon. We could replicate it more or less in Madagalpa for sure. In Managua, more or less, tough. It, you could potentially pull it off, but it'd be very isolated. There she has millions of options for it. Um, but, but that kind of thing is something that's so hard to ask. Do you have nice coffee shops? Yeah, absolutely. Do you have good coffee? Absolutely. Is it affordable? Yeah, for sure. Still, still coffee, right? Still a little bit expensive, but we have good, you guys know, I go to Dr. Coffee all the time. Really good coffee, decent prices, really nice people. We like it. But it's a courtyard. It's not a street view cafe. We don't sit there and people watch. We sit there and hang out and talk, my kids and I. And so that's a very different experience than Valentina gets, for example, where she takes a laptop and people watches at a little cafe in Argentina in Buenos Aires. And uh, so those little things are things that are so hard to convey. I do my best to convey what life is like here, and what different aspects of life are like here, but there's so much that I can't convey. And that's one of the reasons I try to touch on so many different things, take you so many different places whenever I can, show you what my life is like and what I'm doing from day to day. But really, coming down here and experiencing it yourself is going to explain so many things. And everyone has a different perspective. And a really great example is things that I love to do include going to the cafe and uh, doing photography and videography. Like you guys know, I love my cameras. Well, I can't buy those cameras here in country. Now, I knew that before I moved. I lived here previously. I've lived a lot of places. I know that challenge for sure. But it could be something that maybe you're into cameras or something like that. Maybe you're a clock collector and you come down and you realize, oh, people don't have clocks here. I've got to buy them abroad and ship them in. And that's tough with a clock. Like you can mess up the mechanism. Or like me, I have to do all this really careful planning to get my cameras and stuff down here because it's a ton of work, but I can do it. It's just extra work that, yeah, I'm, I'm prepared for. 
but you may have things like this where you get surprised. And uh, of course, Alan, who is on the show from time to time, he came down and he knew this ahead of time, but he really likes auto shows and those just aren't realistically available here. Technically, there are a few very different than what's in the States, very different everything, right? And those are things that you may come down and say, oh, no, it's certainly going to have whatever thing that you think. And then you get down here and go, oh, this thing I like to do, this thing I normally do, this thing I take for granted may be different or non-existent. Maybe something has replaced it. Maybe there's something great here that you had no idea about, uh, for example. And, and obviously, I talk about this a lot. But if you come down and you're not used to going out to concerts and stuff, local concerts, like small town, going to your local bar, hanging out. And when I lived in the United States, these are things I like to do, but I didn't do that often. But I enjoyed going to hear bands at you know my local bar, especially when I would uh, be back home uh, where I grew up, like at my dad's house, and go down to the local towny bar, like across from my high school and stuff, and just see a local band, sometimes with people in it that I know, have some you know uh, local beers, and just sit around with old friends from long ago, and reminisce, and, and see a little band, and, and listen to live music. That's stuff that I always enjoyed. I didn't. I don't like going out to big concerts. A lot of people do, and that's tough here. That's another thing. We don't get big concerts typically in Managua. It's very rare. Um, but it's easy to get to places that do have them. Panama, Guatemala, Mexico City. Um, but but you come down here and realize that the little local band scene is enormous and you can go out every night and it's you get to know the bands. There's so many bands to see and you like it's it's really a fun part of the culture and really a big part of the culture. And in that so that's a reverse where this is something you may not have been thinking about at all. Of course, if you watch my show, you're probably thinking about it. But you come down and say, wow, this is fun. I like this. I like being social. I like being out. I like live music instead of a DJ. Or there's DJs playing all the time, too. You want to go to places and do dancing. I was out the other night doing bachata on the beach. Like, these are things you never expect. Very few of you expect. And you come down here, and maybe that's the thing. And you're like, wow, I thought I was going to be into auto shows. I'm into beachfront bachata on a Tuesday night. Wow. Who knew? Who knew? New. Once you smell the air in Nicaragua or any new country, everything changes at that moment. And until you have that sniff the air moment, oh, that, that should be like the title of this episode, <laughs> sniffing the air and suddenly having that sense of place and knowing what a place is like. And you have to have been to the grocery store. You have to have been out to eat a few times. You have to, and really it takes a little bit of time, but more than anything, you got to get down and, and start breathing the air and start doing those things. And the sooner you do that, the more meaningful any additional research you're going to do uh, is going to be. Um, and, and you'll have made really important decisions like this could be for me. This is absolutely not for me. I'm very much in the middle. I don't know. Right. Like get that stuff out of the way, then dig into the OK, what are the tax implications? OK, what is the the process that I need to go through? What What is the status I need to have? Oh, it, which city do I need to which barrio and what style of house like? Don't get caught up in the minutia more than you have to before you go and answer the big stuff. Answer the big stuff and then the minutia is going to be easy. So what's the thing to do? What's the action item today? As I have often said, your action item is to get on a plane. Find a way to get down here and spend as much time as you can. Is that two days? You come down for a weekend if that's what you have to do. Is it come down for a month? That's fantastic. If you can get three months Find a way, work remotely, do something, come down, put in some time, get to know the country. Then, yeah, once you have that familiarity, you can go wherever you need to go, back home, somewhere for a job, to check out the next location, whatever. And if Nicaragua remains on your awesome places, I might want to live shortlist as a good amount of the time, I think it will, then you'll have the power to evaluate it in a much more meaningful way at much less effort and and your chances of resulting in actually choosing the right place for you will go from very low to very high. And all for a trip that may end up paying for itself in lower cost food and all that kind of stuff, let alone in improved decision making. Now, I know getting on that plane for the first time and coming down feels like the big step, but it's not. Mentally, it is for most of you. I get it. That first I've never been to that place feels like a big deal. I've never been to, I have to stop for a second, Denmark. Going to Denmark, in my mind, feels like a big deal. But I've been to Germany, I've been to the Netherlands, I've been to Belgium, I've been to Norway, I've been to uh, England. I've been all around Denmark. I just haven't been in Denmark. 
is there some barrier to getting into Denmark? No, absolutely not. No, just get on a plane, show up. I could, I could do zero planning, be teleported into Denmark right now. I could take the GoPro with me, and other than the shock of having been teleported into a Nordic country, instantly I'd be functional and able to go around and do stuff, and there would be no panic. Uh, the teleportation would cause a panic. That was a bad example. But being in Denmark would in no way <laughs> incite panic. It would be so easy, and I know this. But I also have a, a mental barrier to why I've never been to that country. It must have something that's done. No, it's, it's so easy, right? I just went to Bolivia last year. I had to go through Peru. I had to go through Bolivia. And all of it was just so easy. It, there's no actual barrier. It's all in your mind. And that's coming to Nicaragua. Get past that barrier. Figure out what it takes to just go to spirit.com or wherever you want to fly from. But that, trust me, they have the deals. And get a ticket to Managua. Come down. Have someone drive you out to a city that you think you might be interested in. Don't make big commitments. Don't think that everything you're doing has to be exact or whatever. Just make it happen. Show up. Smell the air. Have your, your aha moment. Get to know what Nicaragua is all about. Go to the grocery store. Buy some snacks. Rent an Airbnb. Stay in a hotel. Visit a beach. See the city. And start being able to put together real questions and answer real questions and do all the things you need to do to make great decisions for you. Because I don't want to tell you all that Nicaragua is right for you. I don't know that. Nicaragua is right for me and a whole bunch of people. But it may not be right for you. And the sooner we can figure that out, the sooner we can talk about what place might be right for you. Right? That's a big part of this discussion. This discussion that we have in theory, where I talk at you and I pretend you're talking back to me, is not about selling Nicaragua. Nicaragua feels that way because it's a really good option and it's the choice that I made. But it's really about digging into what's good about different places, which places have what to offer, and deciding which of those factors you think are likely to apply to you. And then you go and you try those places and you figure out if they do apply to you, if it's right or not. I can describe Costa Rica. I can describe Panama. I used to live there and give you a really good idea compared to what you also get described from me here in Nicaragua of how they're different, what you might like, what you might not. But until you actually go and walk around, I can tell you, Panama and Nicaragua feel so different. You want to see where I lived? I lived in Rio Ato in kind of midway, about an hour and a half, two hours west of Panama City, uh, on the coast, beautiful high rise, really gorgeous area. And you look at it, but I can tell you, no matter how much you look at it, the feel of the air, the feel of the ocean, just the sense of being there, there's something different than you can tell in pictures. And no matter how much parts of Nicaragua are super close to those parts of Panama, like geographically, we're super close. And historically, we're super close. And they may look really similar, but when you're walking out, there is very palpably something different between them. And you may randomly or, or semi-randomly find one is just perfect and you love it. And one is just not for you. And you can't always put your finger on it. And sometimes it's kind of like when you meet the right girl or guy at the bar, you walk up, you say hi, and it's, it's pheromones right? It's just this chemical reaction. You can't necessarily predict it. You can't necessarily know from across the bar. You walk in the bar, you see someone sitting at the bar and you think, well, I want to go say hi to them. And you walk up, you say hi, nothing, no sparks, no nothing, right? Oh, well, they were attractive, right? Nicaragua is attractive, beautiful country. But if you don't have sparks, maybe it's not for you. And maybe you show up and you're like, I don't know, like, it's, okay, Nicaragua's cute. I don't know, it's not, it's not hitting me. And then you step off the plane, and you're just like, I, I don't know what it is, but my brain is reacting. And there's all this happiness in my head because I'm in Nicaragua. This, how did I not know this is the place for me? You just have to do that. So I encourage you to make that happen. Encourage to go to as many places as you think are really seriously on your shortlist. Of course, do your research enough to make a shortlist. Don't, don't let doing research from abroad unnecessarily keep you from going to places and, and doing that in-person discovery. That's, that's really the thing that we have to get across. So many people get caught up in the, I have to make sure all my decisions are made ahead of time. I have to be absolutely ready to pull the trigger. I got to check every little thing. It's all about checklists and, 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 and thinking, trying to plan ahead. And I understand some people are very planning oriented and that's how your brain works. And so do some of that, but don't let that block you from the very necessary step of coming down and just finding out a whole bunch of things, you will absolutely, whether you love it, hate it, or are indifferent, you will realize how important that step is once you've done it. 
Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, that would be unbelievably fantastic. Thank you so much. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Link on the screen. Link in the description, of course. Very easy. That comes directly to me. Helps pay for the cameras, the driving around the country, all the things we have to do to make this show possible. Thank you so much to everyone who supports the show. You make all this possible. It does take a lot of time and effort to put this together. So I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys know how much I appreciate that. And uh, as always, if you would share this on social media somewhere, uh, post a link wherever, Facebook, Reddit, all that kind of stuff. And uh, of course, it some human that you actually know or maybe a fake one you know online tell them about the show and be like you know there's a whole bunch of like relocation travel latin american nicaragua stuff that's not covered anywhere else wouldn't it be cool if you watch this with me and then when we have coffee at the cool cafe that we have we can talk about what we saw on the show and and leave comments and you know get involved in the community and all that because that's that's what we're looking for i will see all of you tomorrow and I'll pop up on the screen four videos. I know it seems like the funniest thing, but clicking on one of these videos does a lot to promote the show. So if you would do that, I would appreciate it.